Hi everybody, welcome back to Art 371 video projection mapping. Um, I'm going to teach you a really fun lesson today. Before we get into like mapping specific software like Malumen and Touch Designer, I'm going to show you a little bit about what After Effects can do in sort of a, a live uh, mapping or at least a pre-prepping mapping capacity either way. So I've set up these boxes, a little globe on top, and I'm going to show you what can happen uh, when I use After Effects and set it up a certain way. So what I've done is I have my projector connected to my laptop. I've set my projector as a second display. I showed you guys that in an earlier lesson, but I'll go through it again today. So I set that up as a separate display and then I went into the preferences of After Effects and had it send out a full screen preview of whatever I'm working on in my main menu here out to that second display. So I can work in here and I can make an animation like this where I actually have things animating in and out and I'm just previewing it but it's previewing it full screen over there so I could actually you know do some live projection mapping depending on the power of my computer right here in After Effects and run it better bet though is this how is how you would kind of like set something up and then I would render it at full quality and then just play it back in full screen on my projection mapped object so I could export this and just open up the movie as long as I saved it as 1920 by 1080 and it would look pretty good and should line up on everything just fine. So how did I do it? Well, I'm going to take you through here and try to show you. Um, I'm doing a little bit of a fancier tutorial here where you're going to get to see me showing you some live stuff on the screen, but then also some screen capture of what I'm doing here because I know it's hard to see exactly what I'm doing through the camera. So on my computer here, Let's just start new, right? Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit pause, hit spacebar on this. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new composition. And I'm creating 1920 by 1080 standard HD. For you guys, since your projectors are 720p, you're gonna to wanna to do uh, 1280 by 720 instead of 1920 by 1080. So make sure you do 720, uh, I'm sorry, 1280 by 720 so that it matches up for you on your compositions, okay? And you can set whatever duration you want. I'm going to set mine for four minutes, roughly. Mine was set to default of what it was last time, but I'm going to go ahead and set that to four minutes. I don't see anything longer than that for right now. Okay. So now the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your preferences. And you're going to come down to uh, video preview. And you're going to enable Mercury Transmit. And that, what that does is basically transmits your preview screen, your main composition monitor, out to that monitor out there. And as you can see, I have chosen Adobe monitor number two. So my monitor that I'm working with, number two, is 1920 by 1080. That's this projector. Yours will probably say 1280 by 720, like I said, because it's 720p projectors. The M5s, M5s are the 720p versus mine being a 1080p. So choose that monitor number two that you're going to transmit to and hit OK. And now we're going to start to just create some stuff, right? So I'm going to go down here to my layers and uh, actually, I'm sorry, I'll go to my new composition first and go ahead and create my new composition. Whoops, let's go to project there. And then I'm going to go to layer, come down here and go to layer and create a new solid layer, okay? And for this sake, I'll go ahead and make something red. That's fine. It's going to fill the whole screen with red, as you can see in my preview. And as you can see on the display out there. So now I'm going to bring in a mask. And I'm just going to draw in a little square. Okay. Now, the great thing about these is they're interactive, right? They're using vector points and shapes. So I can grab my arrow tool. I'm just going to click off of it, and then I'm going to click inside it. And then once you click inside the object, you can click any of these little square points, any of these mask points, and now I can stretch it. So I'm going to make this mask look correct to my eye on screen here. And I'm going to drag this mask in and make sure that the red is only in that top left kind of square zone, right? And this is all about how it looks to your eye from where you're sitting. Even the camera capture of this is a slightly different perspective, although it does look pretty good there. Um, it could look different if someone was sitting 10 feet to the left or to the right. So that's where projection mapping gets very specific to where you're viewing the projection from. 
We'll talk about that more. Now I'm going to create another layer. So I'm going to go to layer and another new solid layer. This one, instead of red, I'll fill it with, say, blue. Hit OK. Again, flooding my whole screen with blue. And again, grabbing the mask tool and drawing in another square. All right. Grab my uh, little arrow key. Shortcut for that is the letter V on your keyboard. I click inside it once, and then I can click out and grab one of the corners. And I'm going to bring that up, and I'm going to put this just on the right side of that top cube. So it's all about using masks in After Effects, which are very, very powerful, right? Because once I have this mask, then I can apply effects to that color square that I brought in there. So this is kind of like some core concepts you're going to learn down the road in mapping. Um, mapping is going to allow you to do this more interactively live. After Effects, it's kind of like we're setting this up, then we would render it, and then we would play it back in full screen afterwards. So really quickly, I'm already starting to get some cool stuff, right? And maybe I'll bring in my little My Friend Totoro. I have a little GIF that I had brought into After Effects. You can load in whatever you want. And, you know, I can scale this down and stretch it. I at least want to kind of like cover the whole area that I want to cover. You know, and, and, and I can do lots of things to it. Uh, if I open up the layer, I could transform it a little bit. Maybe I, I want to rotate it just a hair just to kind of get it in line with everything. But whatever, that's, that's kind of where I want it. Again, I'm going to just shrink it down a little bit more. That's enough to cover the zone that I'm trying to cover. And then I'm going to go back and grab another mask and kind of draw it out on Totoro there. Close enough. And grab my selection tool or hit V on the keyboard. Click in the middle and then click on a point. Whoop. Clicked off of it there for a second. If you ever get confused, just hit escape and it'll click off of it. So click inside and then click the point. And then I can drag that little point down. I'm going to grab another point here. It's, it's really easy to get kind of confused between like transforming the whole layer versus transforming the mask. And that's where that little trick of like hit escape and then click inside the mask and then click a point kind of resets your tool so that you're only messing with the mask. And as you can see, Totoro is now within that zone that I want, right? And just so you can see it a little bit better, I'm going to go to Effects and Color Correction and go to Brightness and Contrast. And I'm just going to bring up my brightness a little on that guy and bring up my contrast on him a little bit too, just so he stands out. All right, cool. All right, and um, I think that's good for right now. I want to go ahead and uh, animate a few things. So I'm going to go up here to my red square, and I'm going to come down, uh, click on the red square layer, and effects again, color correction. I'm going to go down to hue and saturation, and I'm going to go ahead and set a keyframe. I'm going to, if you open up the effects on that layer, that little effects layer, under hue and saturation, I'll set a keyframe for channel range by clicking the little stopwatch icon. And then I'm going to move a little bit here. I'll move to like five seconds in or so. And then I'm going to come up here to my effects panel. If you're not on it, like if you're on projects, just click on effects panel up in the top left. And then adjust this little dial and you'll see now I have changed to like a green color. And if I scrub it back, you'll see now I actually have a little animation here going red to green. And you can also see Totoro's in action there because that's kind of seen as like video footage, even though it's an animated GIF. And I'll do the last, I'll do the same thing to that blue layer. I'm going to click on cyan. I'm going to save as I go. I'm going to go to layer, I'm sorry, effects. And then I'm going to go to color correction and down to hue saturation. Again, I'm going to move my timeline to, to for like zero seconds. And I'm going to go ahead under the effects for that cyan layer, unfold that, hue saturation. And I'll set a keyframe for the channel range. And then I will move out a little bit and then change my color and it'll automatically set a keyframe for that new color shift. So now I have both my squares changing colors and Totoro is moving. And then maybe I just want to do one more layer. I'm going to do another solid layer up here. This time I'll make this one, let's go purple. Okay. And instead of a square layer, I'm going to go up and put a round ellipse in. And this is going to be for my little globe up top, right? I'm going to choose the selection tool. 
I'm gonna go ahead and move that up there. It's way too big right now. So let's scale it down. If you hold down shift, it'll scale it uniformly. So I'm gonna make it kind of small. Oh, I grabbed a point, undo. Stop. It's so small now, let me zoom in on it. There we go. I'm gonna put it right up in the middle of my sphere up there. Cool. And on that little guy, on the magenta solid, let me fold up a few of these layers just so you can see where I'm at. There's the magenta solid. I'm just gonna unform transform and I'm gonna set some keyframes. I'm gonna move my timeline to zero and I'm gonna set a keyframe for position and scale. And then I'm gonna move out to like 10 seconds and then I'm just gonna scale it. Whoop, wrong way. Undo. Let's go that way, there we go. And just move it down and scale it a little bit more just so we can kind of see it happening, right? There we go. That should be enough. And I'm just gonna move those keyframes over a little bit. I'm gonna copy the first one so it kind of loops. I'm gonna move them just past it and paste them. Now you can see I have this like in, out, in, out on the circle up top. I've got my colors changing and I've got Totoro down below. So I'm gonna fold up my layers here real quick. And so that's really about from zero seconds out to about Looks like I'm about right about 15 seconds. So in After Effects, you can determine like what part of the scene you want to preview at any given time by this gray bar with these two blue handles. Not the top one, but the second one underneath all the times on your timeline. So if I drag this little blue bar over and I put it right next to where my like last keyframe is, which is around 13 seconds. Now when I hit the space bar, I get a lovely preview. Usually the first time it has to render it out a bit, so it might be a little slower. And this is also dependent on like how much processing your computer can kind of handle. So it's going pretty slow right now. The second time through, after it does the full render preview, it should go a little bit faster. Yeah, everything's moving a little bit quicker now. But I could also speed up those keyframes. So that's pretty good. And then back over and it resets again. Now, if your computer is having a hard time and it's just stuttering, change your quality right here to half. Mine's already at half. Um, and you should be good to go. Um, but it's okay if it stutters because ultimately we want to render this out, right? And then we want to play it back in QuickTime. So we want to render this thing. We can go to File and go to Export from Adobe Media Encoder. Let's give it a second here to load up. You can see my preview went away because it just opened up a new app. added to the end of my list. I had a lot of stuff in here, so bear with me. We'll get rid of all of those. And there's my new one that came in. I don't want to do this at YouTube uh, Ultra K. I actually want to do 1080p. For you guys, you'll choose 720p, but again, for me, I'm doing 1080p. Looks good. I'm going to go ahead and save this to my desktop. Yep, sounds good. Let's do um, video test. Actually, I'm going to save this to my archive. It's a little bit bigger. And save it there. And let's go ahead and render. I actually don't need After Effects open anymore. I'm going to go ahead and quit just to save on some computing power. Hopefully this doesn't take too long for it to render out. And then once I have this rendered out, I can just open up the movie file, go to full screen, Resolution and position and everything should be the same as what my preview was. And then I can just play it and I can loop it and uh, do whatever I want to do. Yeah, this is coming out really quick because it's so short. So we'll just test, make sure this all works. Might have to move it around a little bit or adjust it a little bit, but hopefully this plays back just the same way. Without any kind of distortion. All right, cool. Put media encoder. Go to my archive, there it is. Go to view, enter full screen. 
Oh, I'm on the wrong. Let me just move it actually over to that screen. Oh, bear with me, guys. Cancel that. Oh, because I'm still opening up, uh, I'm still recording, sorry, I'm still recording this lesson. I didn't think about that. All right. Let's switch to mirroring real quick, I think it will just work out better. I'm going to go ahead and save my screen recording. And we should be able to put this into full screen now and see how it looks. And there it is. There it is. Playing back, full screen, looking really good. So, pretty cool stuff. You know, you can do the whole live preview in After Effects. You can adjust it where you need it. Then you render it, and then you put it back on your computer after you quit After Effects and render it all out, and play it back, and it's all perfectly mapped. As long as you don't move anything, if you don't move your projector, you don't move your objects, everything will map just how you want it. And you can just loop this all day and all night, which is pretty awesome, right? So. Hopefully that gives you a new set of tools to play with. Um, again, this is kind of what I used to do with After Effects back before I had access to mapping software since you all get free Adobe. Um, and a lot of people that know After Effects well know the thousands of different things it can do. It's a really powerful piece of software. So you combine After Effects with doing this sort of like live prep technique and you can make some really cool video installations that look like they've been professionally mapped into the scene. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Don't worry, the mapping software gets easier and easier in its own way. This is kind of a manual way of doing it. Um, but I thought I'd show you since we're talking about using After Effects to kind of make content anyway, you can also use it to test things out doing that dual monitor setup. So check it out sometime. I hope it works out. And uh, yeah, if you ever want to know, you can always do, uh, it's usually L, yeah. So if you go to view and hit loop, while you're playing back in QuickTime, it'll just play over and over. I know like VLC for PCs has a looping option as well. So that's how I can make like QuickTime just play in full screen over and over and over again. I know I haven't quite shown that yet, but there it goes, just looped again. All right, hopefully that helps and uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, yeah, good luck and have fun. All right, thanks.